Oh my God. Is that the smallest barra? Look at that. Holy dooly. The crocs have been digging up here again. They do this every year. You see where they've been coming up here. It's sand though, they're not, they can't be nesting, surely. Don't know if you can see the size of this little barrow. Tiny little barrow, the same size as it, there he is. You probably, I'm gonna see if you'll come and have a look at this. This is ridiculous how small these things are. He's just sitting there, that, here he is. God, look at that. Well, I just buggered that spot. About a 10 or 11, maybe 12 foot croc just launched in off the bank over there and would have spooked the hell out of everything. He's about 10 foot from where I usually catch those bigger barra that you can remember on the video, so we might give that spot a miss. Oh, yep. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, you've got me in a bad place. He's just pulling the line. I think he's got me tangled around some stuff now. It's not a bad, oh, not a bad fish though. Come on. Where are you? Hey, yeah, good fish. If I can... Oh, he was a good fish. All right, I'll try that again. Exact same spot. Put it in gear, give it a twitch. Let's see if there's anything else sitting up under the face of there. In trouble, in trouble. Oi. Come on. Whew. I thought he had me in big trouble then. Alright, come up here. Land you where it's nice and safe. Not a big fish, probably sort of, ooh, I don't know what that was out there. Around about that 57, 58, maybe, maybe 59 centimetres. Oh, hey, come here. There you go. He's off. Where you, where you go? Oh, splash in the face. Now that there is what you want to see. I don't know if you can see all them. I don't know if the camera's going to pick them all up. A heap of tilapia. Just sitting in there. Something big just came up and had a crack at them by the look of that when I was looking down. So we'll see. There's a snag just there. I'll sink one down underneath them. I can still see them all on top there. So I'll retrieve one of these just under them and see if there's anything Willing. Oh, yep. <clears throat> there we go. He's a nice fish too. These fish, um, this time of year, they're all feeding up. It's really, really humid today. He's a nice one actually. Really humid today, so sort of kicked him into gear a bit and he's only hooked right in the top of the jaw so just want to slide him up here kick now oh i don't like getting that close to the water it's a spooky spot this one oh there's my rod tip we don't want that pretty good hook up there open up Oh, you son of a... The hook's never going to come out. He's actually got a big mark on the side of him. Big mark down there. Right, so... That's that tilapia theory. Proving itself again. And it always does. I might get a photo of this one, actually. I won't get a photo. 
The camera's in the car. <laughs> right. Just get this out of him. Spin him round. Slide him in nose first. There we go. I don't know how these buggers do this. He's actually sucked it inside out. So it's inverted. It's they do it quite often, you'll see it quite often with this type of material. I'd say every smart tilapia would have bailed on that area by now, but that doesn't mean the barrows have, so we'll try it over there now. Sink him down underneath where the tilapia were. And that's all these are, is just a sweep and a tap. So you just sort of sweep it up and tap it. You probably won't see that big boil coming up just there, but about 10 foot this side of where that lure landed then there was a big silver flash and you can actually hear a subsurface oof, like a thump when they have a crack at it and they actually missed it oh there we go he got it that oh dropped in the mongrel that was a good bite too see if he has another go those real big ones i bet you if i pulled my leader in there it'd actually be scuffed and the hook wouldn't have been in him so he would have been clamped on the leader clamped on the leader and then opened his mouth and let it go because it didn't feel real but I don't think the hook was even in him let's have a look at the leader oh scuffed up here look that's how far down his throat that went when he hit it right up to there I don't know if you see that or not this particular spot here is a bit spooky See if there's anything poking around anyway. I don't like hanging around at this spot too long. We are here oh, a while ago and this was all full of flotsam and debris. And while we're standing here, the whole lot of this, this big bay here lifted up and all pushed out that way. So it was no barra. Still makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. This is a big, big barra. Holy Jesus Christ, I don't know if I'm ever going to get him back through that. Oh. oh, oh, God, he's on the other side. Well, sometimes if you just take your time, don't panic him because there's no. There's no trebles on the outside of the, the head. Now, when he jumped, I saw the lure in the corner of his jaw, so I know he shouldn't rub through the leader. The only thing he can do is gill rake me. So I'm gonna try and ease him out here with nice smooth rod work and not panic him. There he is. Hey. Oh, come on. Mucks around there too long, he'll get eaten himself. Don't go under there. Okay, oh, the mosquito in here. All right, so if you're going to jump, jump now towards the bank. No, towards the bank. hook in the corner of his jaw. Man, I'm gonna have to slide him up in some mud. Stop. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Oh, he'd be a good 90 centimeter fish, this one. Oh, I'll get this hook out of here. That's a perfect place to hook him. Let's see if I can hold him up. So can get a bit of an idea. Oh, don't clamp down like that. I'm going get this fishing rod out the road. <clears throat> Hook there. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> it probably 95, I'd say. That's a large one. All right, I'm going to slide him back in those first. Here you'll go. How cool does that look? <sighs> I 
that's the sort of fish that you just live for in tough fights like this you know where you know you you've got it against you to land one is pretty satisfying and that's the other question it's the other question i get asked a lot is how the hell are we landing these bigger fish on little light gear like this this is this is a samurai infinite six to twelve pound so it's not a rod that's made for catching fish like that in <laughs> into or oh, see see this here i don't like that i don't like that makes my bum pucker i might just take a step back here oh shit something just belted it there I might get that little pandanus branch just there out of the way I think that'll let me work my lure a lot closer to the front of that snag there Oy, look at that those bubbles have moved from there to there so now I need to be really careful because he's not going away there's definitely a croc he's not going away he's getting closer so that is a bad sign Actually, if I hook another good fish here, the bloody thing will probably get eaten. I don't like that. Look, I'm far enough back from the water here where I can, I can jump back if he comes out, but it's going to cost me another pair of underwear. You get a little bit complacent sometimes, like that fish there, I thought, oh yeah, no, it'll just be a matter of letting him shake his head and he'll come off that stick, but he didn't. The braid was actually wrapped around something further up and it broke on the braid, not the leader, so. Anyway, I'm still only using 30 though. I, after testing on the weekend, I definitely believe that the lighter you go, the more bites you get, so it sort of, Catch 22, you either want to go for numbers of fish and more bites and have more opportunities or just fish for that one big fish. And I'm greedy, I go for numbers. Little trees like this here. Oh, there's a boil come up there, look. I just put a lure just there a second ago. This is what's really important to sort of Keep an eye out for where you've just retrieved through because oh, if a fish shows interest, you know, you, you've got to be able to capitalize. Oh, spat it. You've got to be able to capitalize on that, you know, and, and sort of put it back on him again because he's he's obviously interested. So, but yeah, you've got to be able to sort of make the best of every opportunity. So, there's his mate. his mate in the same spot so you know, a big fish you know probably just legal size fish these ones but they're still bloody good fun years ago i got obsessed with just chasing nothing but big fish you know and I, I didn't really appreciate fish this sort of size and it's when i look a bit back at it now it's pretty pretty disrespectful of the resource really because there's nothing wrong with it a fish like this, you know, like this is probably, I don't know, maybe 62, 63 centimetre barrel. I'll just get this hook out of him before I pick him up and show you. you know, actually, I'll show you something that can be handy. Sometimes just instead of ripping the hook out, when they inhale these things, they'll quite often, you've got to open the jaw, open the jaw back up to sort of make the hook pop out the way that it went in. So sometimes you've got to open their mouth like that. Now I'm not gonna muck around here. You can see the scars on this one. Something's had hold of him just on the top of the back just here. But yeah, probably 62, 63 centimeter bar. Beautiful. Really tempting to walk out on the end of this tree here because it's gonna give me access to a, a few more spots, but also makes you really, really vulnerable. If you're out there like that, there's about eight, 10 inches shallower than what I am here. So, you know, like it's, it's closer to the water. So there's no way in the bloody world I'm going down there, I can tell you. All right, we're lucky, he came out. 
try that again. Oh, yep. Not real big and he's running straight at me. Then a little baby one. Oh, there's things in here that'll eat you. See, there's another one there. That thump under the water, that... I know we caught there. I know we keep on talking about it, but that thump under the water is quite often a big, big bite inducer. Everything else in the area goes, ooh, tuckers on. Oh, like that. He's running straight at me too. Oh. <laughs> Threw the hook and then jumped. Ooh. Another one running out. That little one again. That is the advantage of it. That is the advantage of a spin rod. Sometimes you quicker retrieve when they're running at you without uh, altering your retrieve ratio on your reel. Okay. You don't want that anymore. I'll give that back. Okay. Here you go. So we know pink's working, but just as a bit of a trial and error thing in a minute, I'm gonna try chartreuse. Only a rat, but first first cast with a different colour. So probably another dozen or fifteen casts there with no no action. And then I actually busted my other one off. The other plastic off, and I thought oh, I'll just pick up the other one. And uh, as soon as I did, first cast. Oh. Actually, I'll try a prong. Radioactive rooster. Yep. Third or fourth cast with radioactive rooster. Ow, I missed a little one, about the same size as this, the cast before, I think. Had a little fun. Geez, they're fat. They must be gorging on a little bait. Oh, sorry, mate. That's a bad belly flop of that one. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to um, go to my bait caster simply because it's got a little bit heavier line on it. Same size leader, 20 pound braid but 30 pound leader. And uh, just because of the territory I'm in here, like it's obviously pretty pretty yucky for getting, for getting big fish out. So I don't want one third, I want one quarter. Now that last fish, he ate a four inch, not a five. So I'm going to try a five and just see, see what happens. Six O's are good in the uh, atomic prongs for when you're chasing barrels. But I find the five.